Hello fellow humans! In this video, I'm going to show you how I discovered the mysterious mushroom that's been all the hype on the internet lately. When I was researching where to find this iconic mushroom, I came across a blog post suggesting that locals in Gunma or Nagano prefectures consume it for both dietary and spiritual purposes. Although I couldn't find any recent sources confirming this, an 11 years old blog post mentioned a specific location where Amanita mushrooms could be found. It is called Yagisawa Dam in Gunma Prefecture. Since I live in Tokyo, Gunma was a more accessible option than Nagano, so I decided to set off on a cycling trip to the dam. I set off from Tokyo, taking three different cycling courses to reach my destination. Numata, a city in Gunma Prefecture. I chose Numata because it is close to the Yagisawa Dam, which is located about 45 kilometers away. So I figured I'd stay there on day one and reach the dam on day two. Moreover, Numata is located in the heart of Gunma Prefecture, so if I ever needed to change my plan, I could easily change my destination. The first cycling course I took was Shibakawa Cycling Road. It was a bit difficult because the bridge kept stopping me, so it didn't really feel like a shortcut compared to the regular street. The second cycling course was called Green Healthy Road. I don't know why it's called that, maybe the city wanted to promote people using it for wellness purposes. But it definitely was very green. I didn't stop by, but some of the parks along the side of this cycling road looked really beautiful. The third cycling course was my favorite, the Notorious Tomega Cycling Road. It's the longest car-free bike route in Japan, with about 230 kilometers total from Chiba Prefecture to Gunma. I love the cycling road, because the road is relatively flat without many obstacles like bridges. After a quick lunch break, I decided to call some local mushroom farms in Gunma since I had come all the way here and my only source of information was a blog post, which was from 11 years ago. I wanted to find more candidate areas to search, but none of the farms knew where the mushroom grew. <laughs> あ、それでも<笑> Right before I left the park, I met a friendly local cyclist who started talking to me. He introduced himself as a 77-year-old who lives in Mayashi, also in Guma Prefecture. He told me that he cycles about 50 kilometers every day. He said that most of his friends his age have retired due to knee pain or injuries, but he seems very proud of his wellness. I should ask him the secret to stay active without getting injured. After cycling about 150 kilometers, right before my destination, there was a short hill climb, but I managed to make it to Tonegawa Kasen Park. In Japan, the closer you are to a major urban area like Tokyo, 
the more likely you are to see signs that say no camping or no overnight stays at public parks. But in rural areas like Gunma, I don't think people care as long as you don't make a bonfire or make too much noise. For dinner, I visited a local restaurant called Mine Shokudo, which was less than 10 minutes from my base camp. The meat was nicely seasoned and went well with white rice. After that, I was tired from the long ride, so I immediately fell asleep. I'm not going to spoil it, but I made a mistake when I chose to stay at the Tonegaokasen Park. You will find out why soon enough. As soon as I woke up, I realized I'd forgotten to bring coffee filter holder. The coffee filter paper can easily collapse, and even though I was careful not to spill any coffee powder, I somehow managed to make a mess and spill almost all of it into my cup. So here I am trying to drink coffee Madagascar style. Because this campsite is close to the river, I noticed that it creates a lot of condensation. As you can see, the surface of my bike got completely soaked. I was a little paranoid that my tent might be stolen, but I decided to leave my stuff inside anyway because cycling from here to Yagisawa Dam requires a bit of effort to climb the hills. I bought some breakfast and snacks to eat on the way and prepare for a hill climb. As I got closer to the top, the color of the trees gradually changed to autumn colors, which created a phenomenal view. I'm really happy to see this view. It's amazing. You may have noticed that the gradient I overlaid in this video isn't very precise. The gradient of either descending or ascending feels like it subtracts a few percent from the original data. I don't know why this happens, but I'll try to fix it for an upcoming video. Shortly after I made it to the top, I found a nice grassy area with birch trees. Amanita muscaria is a type of mushroom that is commonly known to be symbiotic with birch trees. So I immediately started searching. And here it is, the majestic mushroom. I tried to use a knife to cut it, but that was a naive move. You can simply pull the mushroom from the ground with the vulva, which is the base of the mushroom. Also, the vulva is used to identify the kind of mushroom, so it's better to use your hand. And here is a money shot of the thumbnail mushroom I found. In the end, I collected a total of four Amanita muscaria mushrooms and put them in a sealed plastic bag. This later spoiled the mushrooms, but I didn't know that at the time.
while I was packing up, I saw a fox approaching me. At this point, I was a bit paranoid that the fox might steal my mushrooms or even attack me, but I later discovered that this was an unnecessary concern. I have a feeling that this fox has been fed by tourists at this site, so that could be why he approached me. I found it quite adorable. After collecting the mushrooms, I said goodbye to the dam and stopped by a restaurant called Yukinko on my way back. Since they had motsuni teishoku, which is a local gumba cuisine, I ordered it. Motsuni stands for organ meat stew in Japanese. As always, I enjoyed the local restaurant. The stew was spicy and had a good meat broth flavor. The coffee came with a meal set, so here I am holding a camera and pressing the button on the pot at the same time. Yes, it was difficult. After a delicious meal, I decided to find a local place that could examine mushrooms. I was certain that the one really red mushroom was Amanita muscaria, but I wasn't sure about the other three. On my way back to the campsite, I saw a local shop with a sign outside that says, Mushrooms on sale, so I stopped by. <laughs> but the shop owner didn't have any clue. So I visited other mushroom farmers. But they also have no idea about this mushroom. I start to wonder if Guma locals even eat this type of mushroom. So, update. I talked to Guma locals, at least 10 people, asked them about this uh, Amanita muscaria mushroom. They never heard, some of them never heard the name, and I'm not sure uh, whom to ask and confirm. Yesterday when I talked to uh, City Hall, uh, there's one guy who recommended me, uh, the expert. He told me that he'll be back on Thursday uh, to the City Hall. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, call them tomorrow. Thankfully, a staff member at Guma City Hall, who I spoke to over the phone, suggested a place where they could examine mushrooms. I made an appointment with someone who is an expert at local mushrooms at 10 a.m. tomorrow. So yeah, I'm very excited to find out. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna find a place where I can charge my batteries. Probably I'll go to go spa or somewhere. After making an appointment, I went to a spa to shower and charge my gadgets, and then headed to another local restaurant called Nagato for dinner. This place was really interesting because the food portions were huge and the meat was tender and delicious. You can see that some locals who were entertained by the size of the dishes. By the way, at this point, you may have noticed that I only go to local restaurants simply because I love them. I used to not like them very much because I preferred the consistent food quality like franchise restaurants. But in doing so, I realized that I wasn't exploring what was around me. More importantly, 
While franchise restaurants contribute to large corporations, supporting local businesses directly benefits the community. Anyway, Japanese restaurants offer unique experiences, not only in their atmosphere, but also in the distinctive flavors of their miso soup. Each restaurant has its own signature taste. For example, the last restaurant had a mushroomy miso soup, while this one's flavor has a rich fish broth. I'm not a food critic, but you get my point. Today is a day to identify my mushroom. I started with a cup of coffee, hoping to avoid a repeat of the Madagascar blend incident. I was careful not to spill the coffee grounds, and I was able to make a great cup of coffee, ready to go to the mushroom examination place. Good morning. It's 6 a.m. Gunma is also known for its strong north wind, so it's difficult to approach from the south such as Tokyo, but on the way back it was very easy. By the way, the mistakes I made here were number one. I stayed in a place with a lot of condensation which made my mushrooms wet. And number two, I should have put the Amanita muscaria mushrooms in a mesh bag in the afternoon to circulate the air around them and help them dry faster. I learned that Amanita mushrooms lose their potency when they get wet because the chemical compound called ibotenic acid is easily dissolved by water. に取っていただきましたね。ここ紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、紅天狗だけ、
that is approximately 30 kilometers away and has an elevation gain of 1,350 meters. I just um, talked to the mushroom expert and she confirmed that actually that was Amanita muscaria and I'm really happy and now she suggested me a place to look for but the place is I don't know if you can see but there is lots of lots of ascending I don't know if I should go or not I'm thinking about it I didn't want to regret not searching so I went to the place anyway yes greed is a curse お聞きしたいことあるんですけども、ここら辺でこのキノコって見たことないですか。ありました。ここら辺でベニジンだけっていうキノコ見たことありますか。ベニ、これからできたんだよね。ベニ、これどこがキノコだもんね。今年はちょ